today we launch Abandon Harris. Abandon Harris. In the protests on the streets of Chicago, we now declare that the only option for people of conscience is to abandon Harris, to punish her and the party so that they know that they can never put genocide on the ballot. At the same time, despite that public opinion being so strongly in favor of a ceasefire, you see the Democratic administration led by Biden and Harris approving billions upon billions of dollars, new dollars for the Israeli arms. What do you think is going on here? And, and, and talk about the, the powers of capitalism and imperialism versus what working people are able to do. Absolutely, and, and this is such a critical point that you mentioned, that in the midst of our despair and the clear trauma that I and many, as you mentioned, millions across the planet feel, this is a unique moment in our history where we've actually been able to, to merge together, to unite and speak with one voice against violence. That if there's any part in the world that experience this type of maiming and bombing, the rain of munitions that falls on a people, that we can all speak together to have a safer planet. I'm heartwarmed and, and feel so honored to be in a world where people, Muslims, Hindus, uh, Christians, Jews, come together every day. My mentors, Jewish Americans, Canadian Jews, who raised me on the Holocaust, the very reason why I do this work, always reminded me from when I was a child, uh, studying of the Holocaust, that we really should never think of ourselves as coming from a single place. History will judge us, not by the words we speak today, but by the actions we take in this moment of crisis. So, as we are here announcing Abandoned Harris, we are, will continue to work actively against this genocidal regime. We need to break the back of the two-party system. We need to break the back of this oligarchy. Join Worker Strike Back tonight at 6 p.m. at Grace Church in Logan Square for a rally featuring Jill Stein, Shama Sawan, and Nick Cruz. If you're here in Chicago, join us in person. If you're outside of Chicago, join us via live stream, but it's really important everyone is there. We urgently need an alternative to the two warmongering parties and to get every possible vote for anti-war candidate Jill Stein so we can end this genocidal war in Gaza. Every vote for Jill Stein strengthens the anti-war movement, and every vote for Harris or Trump is another vote for the genocidal war. What do you think the impact of the abandoned Biden campaign has been through the primaries? And, and talk about how it came into being in the first place. So abandoned Biden came as a result of the horrors that we were seeing happening in Gaza. Um, a group of Muslim Americans got together and he even ultimated to President Joe Biden, saying you have until October 31st to call for and enforce a permanent ceasefire. And if that deadline is not met, we will campaign against you and make you a one-term president. The, the deadline was not met. And so on November 1st, until he stepped down, we were campaigning against Joe Biden. The resulting feedback has been people who were surprised that we were willing to withhold our vote for leverage and that we were calling upon people to vote against the Democrats, to not vote for the Democrats, and to break out of lesser evil voting as a whole. So some people who said, well, I don't like the Republicans, and now I don't like the Democrats, I'm just gonna sit home. And we said, no, we need to stand in line and still use this tool, this voice of yours that you have to make it clear what it is that you want. What started off as us campaigning against Joe Biden has now become a movement against the idea of lesser evil voting um, and against the idea of voting purely based out of fear. And where is the campaign now in the sense that we're of course in, uh, at a point where Biden is out of the race, you now have Kamala Harris, and we have endless processions of political pundits telling us Harris is different than Biden. You know, she has called for a ceasefire. What, do you, what is your opinion? And do you think that oh, on the whole, just overall in the Muslim community and in the anti-war movement, do you think people agree that Harris is different than Biden and maybe there is some hope there? So those of us who've been paying attention realize that in terms of policy and in terms of rhetoric, 
Kamala Harris hasn't really been that different than Joe Biden. Um, as a matter of fact, our demands are very clear. We want a weapons embargo against Israel, and we want a permanent unconditional ceasefire. Kamala Harris is not interested in doing either. And I certainly have not seen anything from her that indicates that she's willing to head in a different direction than Joe Biden. And that is why we decided to keep the name Abandoned Biden. Abandoned Biden extends to those who were passive bystanders or active participants as Joe Biden unleashed the horror that we saw these last 11 months. We are not going to individualize the evil that we saw. It is not solely a Joe Biden problem. Joe Biden is at the head of it. However, there is an entire body, an entire apparatus, an entire machinery that Joe Biden relied on in order to do what he needs to get done. And Kamala Harris was his number two. So she doesn't get to distance herself from that. So that's why we said we're going to pursue the policy of abandoned Harris, but the abandoned Biden name will stay. And to your point about how she was number two in this, we saw how after she was anointed, really crowned, there was no de democratic, there was no democracy, right? Yeah. Uh, after that, you saw the Biden Harris administration approve a $3.5 billion shipment of arms to Israel, and then another one, which was, became the largest single uh, one, uh, sort of source of funding, like sort of shipment of arms to Israel, $20 billion that's going to be sent over the next many years, which, uh, as Worker Strike Back has said, we think that this is, this is uh, proof that th this is a long-term project of U.S. capitalism and imperialism, and that you cannot, you, you won't be able to end this by hoping that the Democrats or Republicans are going to support you. What do you think about the fact that $23 billion have been approved after Harris was made the nominee? I think this is a point that needs to be considered with people who are trying to get us to support Kamala Harris, bring out the line of saying that as is a foreign policy issue and we'd like to focus on domestic policy. And why should I as an American care about a foreign policy and not the domestic policy? You need to realize that the money that could be used here to support Americans here is being sent over there. You need to be realized that the police officers who regularly engage in acts of police brutality against innocents are trained in Israel. People need to realize it's all tied in together. And with everything that we've seen these past 11 months, from the mangled bodies of children to the slaughter of innocents as they are trying to live their lives, to buildings coming down on the heads of entire families where entire last names no longer exist in the best zone. Entire last names, entire bloodlines are wiped out to the fact that is, uh, Israeli guards are raping Palestinian prisoners. When you take all of that into consideration, just someone saying, I support or we support Israel's right to defend itself means that you are endorsing everything that we've just seen these last 11 months. And personally, as someone who considers himself a person of morals and ethics, I cannot vote for someone who endorses rape, murder, subjugation, and oppression. I appreciate you talking about the unspeakable horrors that are being perpetrated on the Palestinian people and the fact that the Biden-Harris administration is at the head of this because of their warmongering agenda and the fact that they are providing both political and financial aid to Israel is the only reason that this is possible. And you also talked about how the domestic and foreign policy issues are connected. Talk about how what do you think Biden has done in terms of his other promises? And, and you know, keep in mind this is Biden and Harris, what they did with the other promises. The other promise, one of the other promises Biden had made was a $15 an hour minimum wage. And he broke that promise. He also, he, along with the other Democrats, also blocked the railroad worker strike. What do you think about all these promises? And do you think that their broken promises on the economic issues for American working people are also connected to their warm wandering against the Palestinians? I, I think anyone who was surprised by Joe Biden wasn't really paying attention during the campaign. After he won the election and was then headed to Georgia to try to get uh, the Democrats two extra seats on the Senate in Georgia, a lot of his promises were, if you get this done, we'll get you $2,000 checks. What ended up happening is they sent out $1,400 checks and they said, 
$1,400 that we're sending you now plus the $600 that was given to you um, in December equals $2,000. I have fulfilled my promise. Now, some people may not care about that, but that is indicative of the kind of person and administration that we were going to be dealing with. Absolute liars. Um, this is a man who walked up on the podium and said, I never thought I'd see evidence of 40 beheaded babies. And then the White House had to quietly retract that statement saying, he never saw evidence of 40 beheaded babies. Do you, are you personally supporting Jill Stein? Do you think the community that you're speaking for, abandoned Biden, will be supporting Jill Stein? Will you be making a formal endorsement? And also just talk about the value of having Jill Stein as a candidate who is pro-worker, anti-war. It's not, we don't believe that she's going to win, but it is crucial that rather than just sit at home and not vote, people actually vote for an anti-war candidate because nothing, uh, I mean, nothing poses a threat more to the Democrats and Republicans than having an anti-war movement on the streets, but that movement that is armed with its own candidate and its own political representation. So we want to be clear in saying that we do not believe voting is solely the solution uh, to any problems. Voting is a solution. It is a tool. It is a method. Um, and I give the example of a punch is delivered using a fist with five fingers. One of those fingers is voting. The other action is being on the streets, protesting. Um, and so when it comes to actually leveraging the tools that we have, voting is one of them. And we are trying to caution people from saying, I don't like either candidate. I want to sit at home. You need to stand in line and you need to vote, even if you're just going to write in Free Palestine. It needs to be counted and documented and listed down that you were willing to stand in line at the polls and write down something other than the two-party candidates that, quite frankly, exist. And I would caution against people from continuing to engage in lesser evil rhetoric. Compromising with evil doesn't bring us any benefit. As a matter of fact, I hesitate to use the word compromise because it seems like we're the only ones giving something up. Uh, it's a flat out capitulation. And I would ask everyone to look internally and say, 10 years ago, you had a red line. You had moral red lines. One of them was genocide. If I asked someone 10 years ago, if the president endorsed and backed and facilitated a genocide, would you still support them? 10 years ago, everyone would have said, absolutely not. Right now, that red line no longer exists. I totally agree with you, but I think that red line disap seems to disappear when it's the presidential election year. I completely agree with you that I don't think that just the act of voting changes society. History shows that change comes through mass movements on the streets and through strike action, where the labor movement joins as the working class to shut down the profit machine of capitalism on every issue, like the uh, anti-Vietnam war, uh, didn't succeed because we voted for someone. In fact, it was Richard Nixon in office and it was a reactionary Republican under whose reign the Vietnam War was, war was ended. But, but that was because millions of people were marching on the street, including the active duty soldiers themselves. However, I don't believe that the question of the presidential election itself can be disentangled from the anti-war movement because what we see is that the the movement itself gets stymied by vast sections of the leadership, whether it's in the social movement or in the labor movement, themselves being tied at the hip to the Democratic Party. And just to give you an example, you know, as you know, seven, the leaders of seven unions, including the UAW, the National Edu Education Association, they passed a historic resolution unifiedly where they called for the end of all military funding to Israel. But then every single of these unions leadership then gushingly endorsed Kamala Harris. Don't you think that's tiny is the movement? So it, it's not about the vote or elections per se, but it is about clarifying that the movement is not going to win a ceasefire as long as the movement's leaders are allowed to be tied to the Democrats and allowed to promote them through a back door while also saying we support the ceasefire. And, and don't you think that uh, explicitly supporting an anti-war candidate is in service of that idea, like in service of building the movement forward, not about the candidate? I agree. Uh, I have my own personal beliefs, but we have to realize that with Abandoned Biden, we are talking to a community that is on the best political spectrum. 
you're not just talking to people who have gone through the same journey you and I have gone through. You're talking to people who are still indoctrinated with the mentality of lesser evil voting. And so you need to make sure that there's a lot of work to be done to get them from point A to point B to point C. A lot of people till now still believe that the only type of change that can happen is if you win the election. And the message we're trying to send is it's not necessary. The goal of an election or voting isn't to win. It's to change the conversation. Perhaps a change will come about that we would love to happen, but maybe we may not be around to see it. And I'm fine with that. Because as the saying goes, a society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they'll never sit in. And that's what we're trying to embody here. Uh, start something that's perhaps, hopefully, bigger than ourselves and work towards a change that potentially we may not live to see, but we're fine with that. School after school with 2,000 pound bombs, three of them dropped on the last school in Gaza City. Three of these 2,000 bombs killing 100 people or more. They couldn't say exactly because the bodies were not identifiable. And what did the Harris Biden administration do? They appropriated another $20 billion of weapons, which will continue to flow for the next many years. This is a criminal administration. We need to stand up and oppose them. What goes in Gaza doesn't stay in Gaza. For the sake of Gaza, for the sake of us all, we need to stand up for human rights, international law, humanity, and for our own souls. We need to stand up. That is why we must vote to abandon Biden, abandon Harris, Hi, Sister Farah, thank you so much for talking to us. You are from Michigan, uh, Abandoned Biden? Yes, I'm the co-chair of Michigan Abandoned Biden. What are you seeing now in the community that has supported the Abandoned Biden movement, who are now, as you did, just did a press conference to announce that it is now Abandoned Harris, are you seeing that overwhelmingly the people who were part of Abandoned Biden are now also Abandoned Harris? Of course, I mean, if, if they joined Abandoned Biden, they were against that genocide. And abandoning Biden or abandoning Harris is, is not what we are after. We are after abandoning genocide. We are after, after abandoning that, that ideology, that, that uh, 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 mindset of the war, you know, and killing people. So I believe there's no difference between abandoning Biden and Harris. They're just uh, two sides of the same coin. Uh, I represent the organization called Worker Strike Back, which is a nationwide organization fighting to end, alongside you end the genocidal war on Gaza and also for a $25 an hour minimum wage, good union jobs for all, quality housing and free health care for all, and also we're fighting against every kind of oppression, including racism. What do you think about our, our strategy? Our, our point of view is that uh, it is absolutely crucial that for us to show that there is a real... Uh, opportunity, a real opening for independent politics that is needed for the anti-war movement to win, for, for that strategy to actually be effective, that we all need to get behind the mo the strongest left anti-war candidate. And that's why we have endorsed Jill Stein. What is your personal opinion about how important it might be for the anti-war movement to get behind one candidate so that we can get the highest possible vote and show that every vote counts and that this, this is a real opportunity to break from the Democrats and Republicans? Well, this is a difficult question because all three uh, candidates are wonderful and it's hard to, to choose between them. But you're right, because if, if we do not uh, get behind one uh, candidate, it's, get, it's fragmented and it's not, it's, not gonna, it's not gonna help us, it's not gonna help them. And, and it's not going to help the anti-war movement to have the fragmented vote. It is much better to have a unified vote. Yes. So we need to help them help us. So for that, we need to get united. We need to get behind one per one candidate. I, I do not know uh, at this moment what Abandoned Biden, uh, Abandon Harris would do, but we love all three candidates. So let's see how this pans out. Um, we are two, two uh, months out of, from election. So maybe, you know, another month or so uh, when the mo momentum, uh, you know, uh, uh, begins, then let's see what happens.